All right, so we got your boy John Wick here today. Um, a lot of people have already read this and reviewed it and things like that, but I wanted to give it a shot and see what you guys think about it. Uh, you may hear a little bit of noise in the background. That's just the heater going. Uh, but this is issue one in Dynamite Magazine. And, you know, I did some investigating because this story seems so good. I thought there's got to be a, a book. This has got to be like that uh, Tom Cruise movie thing that they did. What was the name of that Tom Cruise movie that they've had two of so far? But anyway, it was a big book series. There was a bunch of those. And I figured, you know, as good as this is, this has to be like a book series, and they picked the best one and they started like that. But no, it was just a screen, uh, it just a script that this guy wrote uh, for a movie. And, I mean, there we go. It just turned out to be this good. Um, I picked this cover just because... I saw all these covers and I was like, you know what? I'll just go with this cover. It's John Wick. It might mean something because it's the actual dude on the cover. So, and it's written surprisingly by Greg Pak. I mean, Greg Pak's the the you know the Incredible Hulk writer, and he's done a, he's doing a lot of stuff this year, which kind of makes me worried. When writers do a lot of different books a year, it, it scares me because usually they they sacrifice certain things. You know what I mean? Speed over quality. Uh, but they had the different different covers here. Uh, I guess I got the photo cover, cover C. There's no artist. Why is there no artist? Oh, because it's a picture. Oh. Um, this is basically this story here is John Wick before he's John Wick. Uh, this John Wick that you're seeing here, even though he looks identical to the one in the movie, um, he is actually John Wick before he became a contract killer. Uh, before he got into the institution and got in with the Continental and all that kind of stuff. So he really has, and it's funny because they come out with this story, and he's almost in the same situation in the third movie now that he is in this situation. You know, he has no help and has no backup, none of that kind of stuff. So anyway, he's in El Paso, Texas, and he shows up randomly at this diner. There he is in the background there. This loud mouth comes in there and sits down and then he walks up to the counter and talks to the lady and uh, something i've noticed in this story is nobody really has that great of a personality everybody's nice but it's like a fake fake nice it's almost like they're trying to show that people just aren't really nice <laughs> but uh she uh she talks to him he says that you know he had saw on the sign that there was a good looking pie in the window he, he wanted to try it out she said okay and then this the loud mouth from before chimes in and there's a, a lady with him, so remember this lady. And he says, who got here first, huh? I, I need a steak, a strip steak rare now. And then he does this awkward thing where he says, I always like it quiet. And he just, that's all, <laughs> I always like it quiet. I would just be like, are you okay, sir? Um, so then he sits down and uh, he's, he's eating his food or he's waiting on his food, he's drinking his coffee, there comes his pie, and the dude just won't let up. He says, uh, I don't have all day. How long does it take to burn a piece of meat around here? And uh, what you looking at, huh? Yeah, pie boy, I'm talking to you. And he said, and she says, hey, no trouble now, huh? You like it quiet, right? Up to a point, he says. He says, you got something to say, huh, huh? That's what I thought. And then... Uh, he says, okay, mister, I got your steak right here. You know what? Forget it. We got things to do. So then he, he fusses after that, and he just leaves. So then um, Wick goes and buys some uh, milk and cereal and uh, a few other things. He shows up at this. They don't really explain what's going on, but he shows up at this random uh, building here, and uh uh, he knocks open the door and he's like, ah, uh, you know, he's ready to fight. He's got this crowbar and there's a little cat. He gives a little cat some canned food because he's really big on animals. And uh, he goes across the street or he goes across the alley there to the next building and uh, gets an apartment. So I guess he was just figuring out, you know, this place here, the layout. And so then he goes across the street, this hotel gets a room and uh, he gets it for the angle of the the building across the street or across the alley uh so then 12 years earlier we get a flashback this is in baja california and uh 
So he's running here, and this is John Wick when he's a kid, and he's stowing some money from these gangsters here. And they're called the Three Bills. Uh, there's like Pecos Bill and, you know, all of them. So they're chasing him, and he pulls uh, this crazy gymnast move and runs away, and they just start shooting at him. So then at that point, they just shoot him, <laughs> shoot at him with a rocket launcher over a couple of grand worth of money that he had stolen. And so then they think they got him, but they walk in there and they just start murdering everybody else that's around. They're just killing everybody. So I'm guessing that they killed his parents. He, they don't really mention it, but I'm guessing that's kind of what happened. So then he wakes up. He sees the cat across the street at that building. Uh, and he sees old dude there, and they don't do a very well job of drawing him, but that's the guy, the hotel desk clerk at the Continental from the movies. They don't draw him very well. I don't know why they can do so well drawing him. They can't draw him. Uh, but that's him. And so now he's in a bad spot because now all these dudes have showed up. And look who it is. But, uh, and I'm guessing this is probably the woman. You know, they hide her face on purpose. But then he knows, he sees John Wick cross road. He doesn't know who John Wick is, but he sees him across the alley. And he's he's kind of like, hey, you just going to let this happen? And so then he's like, he's remembering what that lady said at the uh, at the restaurant. He says, hey, no trouble now, huh? And then what do they got to do? What do they got to do to make John Wick mad? What makes John Wick mad? They hurt the cat. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And he says, up to a certain point, I do like quiet, just like he said before. So he, he improvises. He takes the cushion. He just jumps out the window and uh, uses the cushion to break the glass, uh, Jason Bourne style, and knock the window down. So at that point, he goes to smacking and kicking and shooting. And they pretty much pull every move that I've seen in the movies out in these panels right here. They're going for Bear. Uh, they're doing his classic moves where he shoots the wound a lot of times. Uh, and then his fighting style is he shoots in the feet a lot. I've seen, I saw that in the movie. Uh, he shoots and kills this guy. And a lot of times he does an overkill, you know, shoots him four or five times. And what does he do right here? He throws a gun at him, just like in the second movie. And then uh, pretty much takes them all down. Some of them are wounded. Loudmouth is still there. Um, and then he says, oh, you're the guy from the diner, aren't you? I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. He says, I'm not here for you. I came for Pecos. So that's the guy. That's Pecos Bill with the three bills. And he says, who are you? And that's when he says, 12 years ago, Mexico. And he's like, oh, my God, Johnny. And then he's, they do a pretty good job here because this bad guy is all about um, talking you down while at the same time getting ready to take you out. Because he says, uh, that's you, ain't it, little uh, Johnny, all grown up after all these years. You look great, man. We thought you were dead, but you made it. And there they are, just murdering people down, just killing them in the flashback again. He says, uh, as he's pulling for his gun, he says, I always liked you, kid. So did Billy and Buffalo. So it's Billy Bob, Buffalo Bob, and Pecos, or Billy, Buffalo Bill, and Pecos Bill. And uh, he says, uh, we should call him up, get the whole gang back together. Tell him he had a chance, you know, make things right. And then pulls the gun out. John Wick pulls the John Wick, slips the gun around, shoots him in the chest, and he's dead. Loudmouth is just having not so good of a day. So at that point, he uh, gets his phone and wallet, classic uh, John Wick. And then uh, he says, you all right? Oh, I'm fine, thank you, Mr. Wick. And he says, hello, Sharon. He says, uh, it's been a long time. Are you in the business? This was personal. I see. So then he says, uh, uh, well, the cat approves, and so do I. And then he says... Now, if you'll pardon me for a moment, uh, and he says, wait, he just came for Pecos. Yeah, he doesn't have anything to do with this. He goes, yes, but I do, because, of course, they came to kill him. He's like, oh, crap. So he goes for his gun, and old Sharon mows him down. And uh, then they start conversing here. He says, uh, I couldn't help but overhear you were talking about the three bills. And he says, they're both members 
the, the, the remaining ones are both members of the local continental and thus would be considerable would have a considerable advantage over you should you plan to pursue them says so the continental it says yeah uh, El Paso branch uh, established in 1909 and uh, he says uh, you would be expected to learn and obey the house rules says oh boy so he calls in uh, a reservation you know, just like in the movie, he calls them reservation, get rid of the bodies. The cop shows up, just like in the John Wick movies. They give him a little bit of cash, turns the other way. But then there's the lady. And she says, Maria, the heist failed. Pecos is dead. Everyone's dead. Calm down, Carmen. Just just give me a name. And then we see this huge house here. And it says, ladies and gentlemen, it's come to my attention that there's a freelancer in town who has not been properly introduced to our organization. Translated from Russian. It says... Now, who would like to help me kill John Wick? It's like, oh, oh, dang. So on the next issue, it says, John Wick's story continues in the underworld of El Paso, Texas. A familiar face introduces John Wick to local branch of the Mysterious Continental Hotel, a neutral zone where professional killers spend their downtime. But can John adhere to the rules of Continental, or will his search for vengeance destroy his chances for a peaceful life? So let's read a couple of the notes here. Um... Uh, I don't th this is not really an editor's page. This is more of a story page. All right, so moving on. There's a couple other things coming out. That's kind of weird. Uh, kind of strange. Oh, Barbarella, issue two. Battlestar Galactica. There's your other covers that they have. I think that was a standard cover. And then they had a couple of other covers. Probably like that one. That one's a pretty good one, but I like this one. What'd you guys think? Um, I think it was pretty good. You know, it, it it was straight and to the point. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, of uh, dialogue, a whole lot of stupid things here and there. You know who John Wick is. He doesn't play around. There was a little bit of obscene amounts of ultra violence where it didn't need to be sometimes with like the rocket launcher. But other than that, I mean, it's a pretty good story. Um, it can it kind of makes me wonder what's going to happen next. So I definitely am interested. So, yeah, I believe I'll get issue two and just see what I think about it. Now, as far as uh, as Greg Pack goes, he's kind of a little bit of an SJW. Uh, but we'll see how the story goes. As of right now, it's good. I mean, just continue on this path. Don't do anything political, and you should be good, you know. Also, check out the Shadow Batman issue number four. It's coming out in January. It's a pretty good story. I like the uh, I like the way they tied the old school costume in this cover to the new costume. But all right, guys, that's pretty much all I got to say. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, so you don't miss any of my videos. And uh, anything you can do to support me on my Patreon helps me keep this channel going. But all right, guys, that's it. Underground Geek out.